Hi everybody, this is Dr. A and we are doing a video on quality assurance and we're going over some basic principles. So quality outcomes are of the utmost importance in a clinical laboratory. This is because lab results affect patients' lives. Diagnostic laboratory test results play a decisive role in decision making related to in individual patient care, public health policy, and research decisions. The clinical value of a lab test result involves balancing the benefit of that test against any harm that it may cause. So what kind of harm? Harm can be caused by ordering an inappropriate test, not ordering the appropriate test, not using an appropriate test results properly, delaying or missing test results from an appropriate test, or reporting an incorrect or an inaccurate test result. All of those things can cause harm to the patient because it can cause misdiagnosis or uh, treatments that aren't necessary and the treatments sometimes themselves can cause harm. So it's very important to have some quality management in the lab. So um, quality management works at the organization level to implement an overall quality policy. There are formalized systems that document processes, procedures, and responsibilities for achieving these quality policies and objectives. So the key components to providing high quality lab results include an educated laboratory and specimen collection staff, appropriate validated testing methods, properly functioning instruments, quality assurance and quality control processes that are in place, and uh, peer reference proficiency testing. I have some videos on quality control and some videos on proficiency testing in that for you to review if you need to. Uh, quality management then encompasses both quality assurance and quality control. To achieve a 99% level of quality means that you accept a 1% error rate. It is most important that lab specimens be properly identified and collected because if you do not have a properly identified collect and collected specimen, then everything that goes downstream is going to be in error or can cause even harm to the patient. Uh, special pa patient preparation for some specimen collections might need to be done along with proper transportation to and handling in the laboratory before the actual uh, analytical assay uh, happens and all of that is very important. Quality ass assessment ensures that we have reliable test results. Valid results can be reported only when the pre-analytical quality control has been ascertained. Quality control is done in the lab at least on a daily basis, sometimes even more often depending on the instrument. So let's talk a little bit about CLIA. So that is a law that was enacted in 1988. It is called the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment. And it established a minimum threshold for all aspects of clinical lab testing. And um, in there, there was the introduction of a routine quality control in a clinical lab. And that was a major advance in improving the uh, accuracy and reliability of clinical lab tests. Um, errors that occur during the analytical phase of testing within the clinical lab are now really rare. So let's talk a little bit about the voluntary accrediting organizations. So we have the Joint Commission. It was formerly known as the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organization, um, often referred to as JCO, even though it's the initials are actually J-C-A-H-O. Flip the A and the C and call it JCO. The Joint Commission requires hospital laboratories to be accredited by the Joint Commission itself or by the Commission on Office Laboratory Accreditation, COLA, or the College of American Pathologists, CAP. Per the Joint Commission, a periodic performance review will be required for the laboratory accreditation program, and that periodic performance review is a formal standards evaluation tool that is intended to support the continuous compliance of the laboratory, and it's being added to this accreditation process at the request of the accredited laboratory. So it's, it's a tool that they can use to see what are they going to be inspected on and how you have to make sure that they are in compliance so that they can maintain their accreditation. The ISO 15189 standards in clinical laboratory. So ISO is the International Organization for Standardization. 
and it is a wor world's largest developer and publisher of international standards. It is a non-governmental organization that forms a bridge between the public and the private sectors. The benefit of ISO 15189 is the use of a comprehensive and highly structured approach for quality management that allows laboratory to use tools such as Six Sigma. We'll have a video on Six Sigma coming up too. And gap analysis, the assessors look carefully at where the laboratory does not meet the ISO standard, and then this analysis reveals what facets of the day-to-day -day operations might need to be improved. CAP 15189 is a voluntary, non-regulated accreditation to the ISO 15189-2007 standard. Um, so CAP 15189 requires a steadfast commitment to the laboratory management system in all interacting departments. Uh, it does not replace CAP's CLIA-based laboratory accreditation program, but rather complements to CAP accreditation and other quality systems by optimizing the processes to improve patient care, to strengthen the deployment of quality standards, to reduce errors and risk, and to control costs. A little bit more on quality assessment. So external standards have been set to ensure the quality of lab results reported through QA as imposed by CLIA 88 and as administered by CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. A clinical lab must be certified by CMS or by a private certifying agency or by a CMS approved state regulatory agency. If they're not, then they cannot get funding from, you know, reimbursement for, for lab tests from CMS and CMS is one of the biggest reimbursements of lab tests. Included in the CLIA 88 provisions are requirements for QC and QA, uh, for the use of proficiency testing, and for certain levels of personnel to perform and supervise the work in the laboratory. So how educated do you have to be to do certain tests and to report those results out? Once certified, the lab is scheduled for regular inspections to determine compliance with federal regulations, including CLIA 88. Most labs are um, inspected about every other year, and um, it's a very serious matter um, that they are very careful with. Um, a little bit on error analysis. Um, so error analysis can include active and latent errors. So active errors include failing to identify a patient before phlebotomy, missing a blood vessel during phlebotomy, Errors with anticoagulants in collection tubes, so collecting the wrong tube. Um, errors with transportation systems, such as the pneumatic tube system. Errors with data entry. And errors with instrument or computer, such as ignoring an instrument flag. The latent errors include staffing problems, such as chronic shortages, which then can cause staff to take shortcuts and cause other types of error to happen. Uh, information technology problems, such as no interface with technology or problems with uh, technology interfaces. Equipment malfunctions, such as uh, old error-prone analyzers. Uh, good labs replace analyzers every so many years to keep up with their technology um, because just analyzers uh, run down. The work environment, such as um, your, the expectation of multitasking, a poor lab layout, a disconnect between the lab and the patients, um, policy and procedures, such as the relabeling of mislabeled or unlabeled tubes, and lab requisition variations, teamwork factors, such as poor communication between shifts and departmental silos, so departments that don't talk to each other, like if chemistry don't talk to hematology, uh, etc., or even uh, sometimes a poor communication between the lab and outside lab entities, such as doctors and uh, nurses. And then management organization problems, such as when uh, profit is a goal, ignoring patient safety, and a de-emphasis on incident reports and interventions based on analysis. So how to improve? So ways to improve overall errors include at least three strategies. So formal patient safety training, including a discussion of the disconnect between lab personnel and the patient. Uh, again, so everybody's goal in the lab should always be patient safety, which includes the reporting of accurate test results. Enhance communication between patients and lab staff and providers that are directly caring for the patients.
And then quality improvement projects that involve patient outcomes data and feedback of the data to the laboratory staff with an analysis of the consequences uh, of high quality or low quality work. So again, if the lab staff is making some errors, then it's good for them to know how this is impacting patient care so uh, that they can find the appropriate solutions to keep patient care uh, to high quality standards. So where are the errors? Uh, so there are three phases of testing. There's the pre-analytical, also known as the pre-examination phase. And that is the phase that encompasses um, order of test and specimen collection and delivery to the lab and checking it in. And then there's the analytical phase, which then is the actual performing of the test. And then there's the post-analytical phase or post-examination phase where um, it's the reporting of the test results back into the patient's chart or electronic health record. So most laboratory errors are related to the pre-analytical uh, phase or the post-analytical phases of testing rather than the analytical phase. So uh, specimen and related errors in continue to be a major problem So because there's the human component to it. It's something that we cannot automate. We have to have an interaction between individuals to, to get a specimen collected. And so um, the pre-analytical phase of testing is particularly error prone, mainly because it is especially susceptible to human error. The post-analytical has less error because we've had a lot of interfaces with computers and things that are automated. Um, but simply typing in the wrong results or uh, typing in uh, results on the wrong patient or something like that could you know, be an example of a post-analytical error. Some non-analytical factors in quality assessment, we have to make sure we have qualified personnel, good established laboratory policies, a lab procedure manual that's accessible by the employees and it's easy to read and understand. Um, Test requisitioning, so that's going to be usually outside of the lab, um, ordering the right tests, etc. Proper patient identification, specimen procurement, procurement and labeling, proper procedures for specimen collection and storage, specimen transportation and processing, preventative maintenance of the equipment, because a well maintained analyzer breaks down less than one that is not well maintained, and selecting the appropriate methodology when a test is brought in house. Um, because you know not all methodologies are uh, the same and so uh, finding the right one for the lab and the population is really important. So lastly we're going to look at accuracy and reporting results in documentation. So um, the introduction of computer interface online reporting is useful in communicating information correctly and efficiently. Uh, no more paper writing. Now we everything's been computerized from the order entry all the way through the re reporting of results. Um, because of that now we have systems in place to monitor individual patient results. One of those is called a Delta check and the Delta check looks at the difference between a patient's present result and their previous results. And if it exceeds a specific cutoff value then it's flagged and that's the Delta check. And the tech has to review it. The ongoing process of making certain um, the correct laboratory result is reported for the right patient in a timely manner at the correct cost is known as continuous quality improvement or CQI. CLIA regulations mandate that any problem or situation that might affect the outcome of a test result be recorded and reported. All such incidents must be documented in writing, including the changes proposed in their implementation and the follow-up monitored. Lab computer systems and electronic information processing will expedite rec record keeping, and that's been really pushed with the electronic health record incentives where um, everything is being put on, the, on computers, but also linked together where all these systems are communicating. And now even um, the patients have access to lab results and lab reports through apps and access to programs like MyChart. So QA programs also require documentation and computer record keeping capability exists in this effort. And so there are programs 
that uh, can manage lab quality and quality assurance with the end and quality control and all of that together. So uh, it's good to take advantage of that. So anyway, so that wraps up our uh, little video on quality assurance. And um, I'll have one more on Lean and Six Sigma coming up. So thank you for your attention.